Hey guys, so one of the best things about the TrueNAS installation is the ability to run jails from within one. So what is a jail and why would you care about running one? Well, in a traditional virtual machine, you usually have an awful lot of overhead in terms of resources. So if you were to do something like do a full installation of Windows, which you are capable of doing in the TrueNAS installation, uh, you would need the equivalent amount of RAM, storage, memory, etc, etc, as though you were running the machine itself. So in comparison, jails are a lot more lightweight. They run an OS level uh, sandbox that allows you to run applications from within the jail and interact with some other machines, but without all of the resource overhead that is usually required with a full virtual machine. So if we log into the TrueNAS dashboard, we can take a look at the left hand side and click on the option for jails. And then when this loads, we can see that I'm not actually running any jails on this pool. Why did I say pool instead of on the TrueNAS installation? Well, Jails are not just run on the TrueNAS installation itself. If you've got more than one pool, you can click on the gear icon here on the right hand side and you can actually choose a pool for the plugin and jail storage. So that's where you would uh, in do the installation for the jails themselves. And I've got two pools. There's a couple of jails running on media, but I've chosen that I'm going to spin this jail up in uh, Vault. Why does it matter? Well, if you've got two pools, there's a significant chance that there's a reason that you've got two pools. Maybe one of your pools is a small uh, storage that's configured better for reading or writing or has a specific task in mind, or it's just made of SSDs. And because jails are running all of the time, it makes a lot more sense for you to put it on one or two SSDs than it does your entire pool. So once we've chosen what pool we're going to uh, add it to, we can just hit the add option here on the top right hand side. So we've got a couple of options here. Uh, there is a very simple build out that we can do here, or there's an advanced jail creation. I'm not going to go through the advanced jail creation because for 99% of us, uh, we don't need to configure a lot more options than are in the basic construction here. So I'm going to go through the basic installer and then we might change one or two settings in the uh, once the, the jail is spun up. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a name and I'm just going to call it TrueNAS test. And then we've got a jail type here that uh, we can choose from. So there's two options, it's the default or the base jail. And really we don't need to worry too much about this. The difference between the two of them is the default clone jail uh, really ties itself to the type of FreeBDSD release that you're going to um, be using and the base jail uh, really doesn't. But that's uh, the, the difference here is uh, something that we really don't need to be worried about at this level. And then we get the option to use the FreeBDSD release that the jail is going to install. So we can see here, I've got a couple of options here. I'm going to use the latest release that's available to me. The latest release that's available to me will never be any bigger than the latest release that's uh, actually being used in TrueNAS itself. So TrueNAS is using 12.2 and uh, I'm also going to select 12.2 here. So I'm going to hit the next option. And then I've got a couple of options here. So one of the main decisions that we want to make here is whether or not this jail wants to get its own IP address. So the way that I configure my jails, and especially for any of the projects that's going to require a jail in the future that we're going to be doing in other videos, I like to give each of my jails an IP address that specifies that specific jail. Um, that's You don't necessarily have to do that. They can all use the same IP address uh, that uh, TrueNAS is using. Uh, and then just use different ports depending on the service that they're running. But I like to give them each their own IP address and really differentiate uh, between uh, the, the, the number of jails that I'm um, running. So usually I would check the DHCP auto configure IPv4. You can see that VNAT um, ticks itself as well because it's required for that option. If you want the jail to share the IP address of your uh, TrueNAS installation, you should just select the NAT option as well. And we can see if I select the NAT option without VNAT installed, it will automatically enable um, VNAT as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit DHCP auto configure IPv4. <clears throat> So then it's going to ask me here whether or not I want to use a specific interface. I've got more than one installed here, but to be honest with you, we can leave that as automatic. There's there's no need to make a change here. And then there's an option here for auto configuring IPv6. I'm not using IPv6, so I'm not going to worry about that here. But if you are using IPv6, that's where you would do it with the, the jail. So then we can hit the next option here. And then that's uh, essentially it uh, in terms of the base configuration. We can hit submit and then uh, TrueNAS is going to automatically create the jail here. So that's going to take a minute or two whilst we wait for that. 
this is the time that I would maybe ask if you're enjoying this content to go ahead and do the YouTube dance, which is to maybe like, comment, and subscribe on the video below. And otherwise, through the power of YouTube editing, we can skip straight to when the jail becomes available. So what we're going to do uh, here is we can see the jail is now available, but it's in a down state. It's not running. We're just going to change one or two advanced options uh, before we start running the machine itself. So my favorite option to do is when I expand the arrow icon on the right hand side and hit edit, I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to see the option to auto start. If I select that, that allows TrueNAS to launch the jail at boot, which means that it will actually boot itself back up again if TrueNAS restarts or if I restart the, the installation. So it will it will take care of running again. I won't have to go back in and turn the, the service on uh, manually. The other thing that I might like to do is if I skip over to custom properties, there's an option here for priority. And that is the priority at which uh, it boots. So here it's defaults to 99. Uh, 99, which is the default boost priority for uh, pretty much any uh, jail that's created. But maybe I've got a couple of jails and I know that I want one of them to start before uh, the other one does. So what I would do here is I would change the priority. So if I hit 99 here, then um, that will be uh, the last boot option. But if I gave it 98, then that would boot before a jail that was uh, priority 99. And that can go all the way up to one or uh, zero. So I'm going to set that. Uh, I'm totally fine with that being priority 99. I'm just going to hit the save option there. And then here again, I'm going to hit the right arrow option. And then I've got the option to start the jail. And once the jail is started, we can see that it's uh, in an up state right now. We get another option here for the shell. And uh, I can go in here. I can hit uh, shell. And this will give me a command line access to the jail itself. So I can go ahead and... Uh, install anything that I would like to run on the jail itself. So maybe I would go ahead and do package install uh, nano. And then it will ask me in the traditional function for command line interface whether or not I want to fetch and install nano on the system. I'll just go ahead and do that. And it will go ahead and uh, download and install it. And then I can continue to work on. So you can go here and you can install anything you want at an OS level. So that's it guys. That is creating a jail in the TrueNAS system. If you are here from one of my other videos where we talk about uh, launching Plex, Sonar, Radar, and some of the other options, then uh, please go ahead and check those ones out again because we'll go through how uh, you install that on the various different jails. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.